Hello and welcome to Electric Bike Report. My name is Pete and this is the Rad Power Bikes Rad Rover Fat Tire Electric Bike in for testing and review. This bike has 4 inch wide fat tires and 750 watts of power. It's a pretty interesting bike. So uh, this is a video overview and I'll have the full review for you at electricbikereport.com. So with that, let's take a look at some of the details. All right, let's take a look at these big fat tires. These are the 26 inch by four inch wide Kenda Juggernaut tires. And uh, let's just talk about uh, fat tires in general. These are really interesting because they're built for um, all sorts of terrain and that's uh, sand, snow, mud, hard pack, pavement. They really can ride on, on almost anything with these fat tires. Um, they have so much air volume that they have a built in suspension effect. Uh, they can be run at these lower pressures so that you can really mold over the terrain you're riding on. Um, they have such a large uh, tread patch on the ground that you just get amazing traction. So overall, you know, uh, fat bikes themselves are, are just pretty fun for, uh, for riding in all terrain and they definitely have a pretty bold look to them uh, as well. These uh, Kenda Juggernaut tires themselves have a uh, fairly low tread profile and uh, you know they're good for off-road but they're also good for just cruising around town. So uh, you can see the, uh, the clearance in the frame here so definitely some clearance for mud and snow riding um, but uh, overall you know these are uh, just a, a lot of fun to ride on. Now let's take a closer look at the frame here. This is a 6061 aluminum frame and uh, you can see that the tubes have a pretty unique shape to them and that's the hydroform tubing. And what they're able to do is really sculpt these uh, tubes so that you can uh, get like a nice standover height here so the Rad Rover can fit a wide range of riders. Uh, it also helps to place material at high stress areas like the head tube. You can see nice solid connection of the top tube and down tube at the head tube. Um, you can also see that they've uh, shaped the down tube to provide a pretty flat surface area for the battery to mount on the down tube. And that's a really nice location for the battery because it is a pretty centered and low weight distribution of the battery, which is just good for overall bike handling. And uh, you can also see some internal cable routing uh, on the top tube and the down tube there. Uh, same thing on, on this side. You can see it here on the the top tube and right here at the head tube are is this bolted connection and this is for a front uh, rack or basket that Rad Power Bikes sells separately and so you can have a really sturdy connection for that uh, cargo rack or basket. Same thing is true on the back of the Rad Rover. You've got nice connection points for a rear rack so you can carry cargo you know when you're just out running errands or commuting or uh, when you're out on that uh, that adventure ride with the Rad Rover here. So um, anyways, just some nice detailing on the frame. Um, and on the back of the seat tube here is the controller for the main uh, e-bike system. So just below the battery pack are two bolts for the water bottle uh, cage that you can uh, mount on the bottom of the down tube. So just nice to see that you can put a water bottle on the Rad Rover here. All right, so here's a closer look at the RST suspension fork. This has 80 millimeters of travel, which is about 3.2 inches of travel. And the uh, preload is adjusted uh, on the right side as we're looking at it here. And then on the left side is the lockout. And that you can use if you're riding on you know, pretty smooth roads and you really don't need the suspension. Um, that just provides a little more efficient ride overall. And uh, you can also see that the uh, suspension fork has quite a bit of clearance there for these 4 inch wide Kenda tires and uh, also has the front uh, headlight that runs off of the main e-bike battery. So one of the big upgrades for 2018 is this high capacity 48 volt 14 amp hour battery pack um, that uses Samsung cells and it's a lithium pack that has 672 watt hours. Um, definitely provides quite a bit of range for the Rad Rover and you can see the full uh, range test results in part two of this review at electricbikereport.com. Uh, on this side is a rubber cover that uh, covers the charging port for the battery and uh, just over here that's the lock um, for the battery so you can uh, unlock the battery with the supplied keys and uh, remove it by sliding it up and off the, the down tube there. So here's a look at the battery when it's been removed from the bike with the uh, charger here plugged in. 
Uh, on this side, you can see the two keys that are supplied with the bike. Uh, at the top of the battery pack is a, uh, a charge level indicator, so when you push that button, you can see how much charge the battery has. And uh, just on this side here, you can see that's where the charger is plugged in. The charger itself, it's about the size of a laptop charger, and it takes about five to six hours to fully charge an empty battery pack. Um, and this can be charged on the bike as well. So here's a look at the frame uh, with the battery removed. This is the battery connection on the down tube. And uh, you can also see that kind of flattened area of the down tube. So it really creates a nice platform for the battery attachment. Here's a closer look at the 750 watt geared rear hub motor from Bafang. It's a fairly compact motor considering that it is 750 watts. Hides pretty well behind the largest cog, the cog set. And uh, here's a look at the disc brake side of the motor. This uh, will provide assistance up to 20 miles per hour and it's uh, got pedal assist and a throttle option so that makes this a class 2 electric bike. Now let's take a look at the drivetrain. First of all you've got these nice wide platform pedals. They're, they're aluminum pedals from Welgo. They have a nice grippy surface to them and um, then you've got the cranks with the double uh, chain ring guard so this really helps to keep the chain on the uh, chain ring and uh, you can see just behind the cranks there is the cadence sensor uh, for the pedal assist. So that uh, uh, senses when you're pedaling and provides the proportional assist based on the pedal assist level you've selected. And then on the back here is the Shimano Acera rear derailleur that shifts through the 7-speed cog set on the back. Here's a closer look at the Tektro Ares mechanical disc brakes. They have 180 millimeter rotors on the front as well as the back of the bike and the brake levers themselves have sensors built into them so when you uh, grab the brakes any kind of assist will stop and that's pedal assist or throttle. And The idea is that uh, you don't keep motoring along when you don't mean to so uh, it's a nice uh, safety feature. So here's a closer look at the Velo plush saddle has a fairly wide profile to it and uh, one of the unique things is on the back of the saddle it has a handle so that helps with maneuvering the rider over uh, or picking it up and also just below that you can see the uh, rear LED tail light and it's powered by two AAA batteries and it has a solid and a flashing mode. All right let's take a look at the controls on the Rad Rover. First of all, on the left side of the handlebar, these are the uh, ergonomic grips with a uh, sort of faux leather finish. Uh, the Tektro mechanical disc brake lever on the front, and as you engage the uh, brake levers, it'll stop all the pedal assist. There's the built-in bell right there, the control pad here that cycles through information on the display. And so on the display here, you've got uh, the battery level in the upper left here, the odometer. There's also trip distance as you hit the center uh, button of the control pad, the current speed, and then the pedal assist levels. And so I'm going through and hitting the up and down uh, buttons. There's five different levels of pedal assist. And then there's also zero, which is no assist. And then there's uh, watts that the motor is contributing to the ride. And it's really interesting as you cycle through the different pedal assist levels to see how much uh, power the motor is providing. And then uh, over here on the uh, right side is the Shimano shifter. So as you hit this button, it goes down the cog set and this goes up the cog set. There's the uh, twist grip throttle here. And uh, this is pretty interesting because there's a uh, on off button. So you can turn the throttle off if you're not using it. And that's a nice safety feature so that, you know, you don't accidentally twist the throttle and the bike goes when you don't want it to. But uh, you turn it on and, and then it's engaged. And then uh, there's the rear Tektro brake lever and then the faux leather grip on the right side. So another uh, change for 2018 is Rad Power Bikes went with a a more upright handlebar and shorter stem that is also a bit more upright just for a very comfortable ride position. And last but not least is the kickstand and this has a uh, nice solid platform at the bottom and solid connection to the frame too. Okay, so that is the overview of the Rad Power Bikes Rad Rover Fat Electric Bike. You can check out the full review at electricbikereport.com. That includes a bunch of detailed pictures, ride characteristics, range test results, pros, cons, and overall thoughts. All at electricbikereport.com.